All right, I got another one to fix up. It's an old Polaris Transport snowmobile. Two up, long track. I got it from my dad. He got it from my uncle. I drove this sled when it was like brand new almost. And then a few years ago, I got it running for my dad. Drove it uh, when they got their new house and it's kind of been sitting untouched ever since. We did pull the carbs off a couple of years ago and tried to clean them. We cleaned them, but we didn't put them back together and put them back on the sled. So they're in a box. Uh, it has reverse, but it's never worked. So I'm going to try to get that working and the seat needs to be repaired. I'll see if I can maybe find a seat skin for that and a couple other things too. So we'll see if we can get her going again. I'll, I'll kind of give you a walk around of it real quick. All right. The sled is a 96 Last driven in 2014. I was the last person to drive this probably back in 2014. I took it ice fishing. It ran good. It ran real good. It's a 440 air cooled. You can see the seat's got a hole in it right there. The track looks in okay shape. Not too bad. It is a long track. I'll have to check that out. It does not have electric start. It's kind of cold. Yeah, this seat is oof. Oh, yeah, that's got to go. What was I saying? It does not have electric start, but it does have reverse, but the reverse has never worked. It's kind of nasty in here. And like I said, the carbs are not on it. They're in a box, but everything is here. It ran before we parked it. Famous last words, but I was the last one to drive it, so I know it runs. So... Yeah, it's nasty. So, kind of forgotten about. Yeah, it was forgotten about. It was just never, never really. My dad doesn't really ice fish a whole lot. So, he had it. Now, um, I ice fish a little bit. So, we'll get it going when we go take it ice fishing. So, a couple years ago, uh, my dad and I took this tank out and cleaned it because it was dirty. And now, look at this. It must have got some water in there or something. It, I don't know if you can see that, but it's pretty rusty. So got to pull this tank off again and get that cleaned out and clean this dipstick off. I'm not quite sure what's going on in there. So we'll, we'll do that first. All right, I got the seat off. There's two bolts back here that you just undo from the bottom. And then there's two little snaps right here on each side. You just snap it and then the gas line comes off. And then this is like the little vent line here, and that just breaks off nice and clean right there. Um, so you just rip it out and then replace that. That's how that works. All right, quick little chat. If you've subscribed to my channel, I really appreciate it. I, right now, am, I've got a career. I'm raising a two-year-old. We just had another baby, and I'm getting my master's degree. So... I haven't had a lot of time to edit videos. I've shot about six or seven of them. So I've got them on my phone. I just need to edit them and get them out. So if you've subscribed, I appreciate it. I've got more coming. If you haven't subscribed, that means I've got a lot more stuff for you to look at. If you like me, I know I'm not that funny sometimes, um, but I, I really enjoy doing this. I like interacting with people in the comments. And so if you wanna subscribe, I got a lot more coming out and I would really appreciate it. So thank you. So this is kerosene. I'm going to use this to clean this gas tank out. I don't know. I've had this kerosene in my garage for a couple of years. So maybe it's bad. I don't know if kerosene goes bad, but this is what I'm going to use to clean this tank out. So try not to fill this too bad here. And then here's a trick my grandma taught me when cleaning snowmobile tanks. Grab some nuts. 
you know, some bigger ones. Wing nut, I don't know, sure. Lug nut, yeah. Throw some nuts in there. And uh, when you shake it around, that kind of knocks loose whatever's in there. And then you just fish them out when you're done. So I'm going to let that sit for right now. Let that kerosene soak into whatever's in the bottom. And I'm going to try to get some of these leaves and stuff out of here. Maybe get that cleaned up a little bit while that stuff is soaking. Also, check out this van I got. I paid $115 for this. $115. It's a one-ton van. Kind of beat up. Runs and drives great. I had to replace the crank position sensor on it. It's got a 5.4. 175,000 miles. $115. Can you believe that? At an auction. Pretty sweet, huh? Good. That's nasty looking stuff. Oof -da. Definitely do not want that running through your engine. So I'm glad I did that. Looks like there's probably some water in there too. Look at that nasty stuff. So yeah, I'll probably do that a couple more times. I won't make you watch me wrestle that again. That was kind of awkward, but yeah, that nasty nasty tank can you see in there Ooh, that's some nasty looking stuff looks like the pickup tube fell off and there's still a bunch more stuff in the bottom of that man that's annoying those big chunks haven't come out yet so i wonder what i wonder what i can do i don't know wish my grandma was still around she'd know what to do all right, there's obviously a lot of scuzz in there, so I'm gonna, I just filled that with more kerosene. I'm gonna let that soak overnight. Um, just let it soak in with whatever's causing all that nastiness and just really let it think about what it's done. All right, next thing that we're gonna work on is this rope guide. So for the pull rope, see how it's worn out right there, stuck in there. It's worn out pretty good right there and then there is another one up here which i could you know swap it out they're the same thing 
you can buy them in two packs, but I, I got one. They were ten dollars. This new one is aluminum. It was like ten bucks. But this one looks fine. I'm not gonna mess with that. And then, but that one for sure needs to be replaced. If I was being really cheap, I would just swap them. But yeah, ten bucks. Looks like I gotta drill that thing out, and I probably gotta. Retie this somehow. Yeah, okay, easy. Easy peasy. turn it and pop it out let's see there's that thing right there there's a little notch in there This one looks like it's supposed to be riveted in the same way, but I think what I'll do, yeah, I probably have some rivets. I can pop rivet that in there. Yeah, I'll just do that. I'll do it the right way. All right, this is just like a 3 16th rivet. Pretty standard, get them anywhere. I don't know if that's gonna be deep enough. Oh yeah, plenty of deep, plenty of deep. There we go. Just like the factory. And Rozo, actually, fun fact. Yeah, these are made in, I don't know, Rozo, somewhere in northern Minnesota, only a couple hours from here. So this this is a local machine. It doesn't really travel too far from its birthplace. All right. Give it a nice yank. All right. Sweet. Much better. That was easy. That's kind of a load off. Yeah. Aluminum's going to be a lot better. They should have done that from the factory. Um, obviously, because I just had to replace it. They should have done that. So, sweet. On to the next thing. All right, so here's the carbs on these. Like I said, my dad and I cleaned these a long time ago, probably a few years ago. Um, so they're not in bad shape, but when we put them together, the kit that my dad got 
um, he had mentioned that the, the needles in the seats did not have the Vuitton coating on them. So they're probably less lower quality. So I'm just going to crack these open and just make sure that they're still in good shape in the bowls. And then I'm going to check those needles and seats. And then I might have some. If not, I'm going to order some with the Vuitton seal just because I have the carbs out and we might as well just do it the right way. I'm going to be using this with my kids and ice fishing and stuff. So I don't want to have any issues with these carbs. Got to get a new bolt there. Come on, Dad. Oh, there's no... There's no needles and seats in them at all. Well, it's a good thing I just didn't throw these on there. He, he sent me with a bunch of stuff over here. Maybe they're in here. Oh, sure enough. There's the... There's the needle and seat in there. So he probably, yeah, he just didn't even install these. Yeah, here's the old, here's one of the old needles and seats. She's pretty well stuck in there. Yeah, nothing in my carb part box. So I'm just going to go ahead and order those up. Everything else in here looks good. Uh, like I said, we cleaned these a bunch of years ago. So I might have to order the whole kit. If not... Might change out those gaskets too. There's new gaskets in here. Yeah, I'm gonna change out these gaskets. They're kind of crappy looking. All right, I did a little research, and the the factory apparently the factory needles and seats on this are not Vuitton tipped. So I prefer the Vuitton tips, but um, I have brand new needles and seats here. I'm gonna try those. It's not that difficult to take these carbs off if they leak. Um, I'm going to install a new fuel shut off. And so if they do leak, I can still use it, use the fuel shut off. It's, it's not a big deal. Uh, and then replace the carb, take the carbs off and replace the needles and seats if I need to. But, um, I have them, so I'm going to use them. Got the carbs back together. I found a screw. It's just a little too long, but it's going to work. Don't judge me. I don't care or judge me. I don't care. Whatever. It works. It's not in the way. It's fine. Um, saves me a trip to town. And pr one of these is probably like a dollar, to be honest with you, if you were to buy one. So, yeah, save myself a dollar. All right, it's been 24 hours. So, let's see what we got. That's looking rusty. <laughs> Also, check out how good I got at doing this. Look at that. All right, that's looking a lot better. So it's not nearly as cloudy. I guess I didn't shake it up, but still some sediment on the bottom there, kind of nasty looking. And um, yeah, I, I pretty much just, I just gotta keep doing this until there's nothing nasty coming out because otherwise it will go through the motor. I was going to just replace the, the lines to the carb carbs on this, but look at that in that fuel pump. That is just plugged up tight with I don't even know what, gunk? All right, a little bonus footage for you. I got this, uh, it's a TRX-125 I picked up and got it from a buddy of mine. He said it was cold-blooded and uh, couldn't get it to idle right. And yeah, lo and behold, that yeah, the gas tank is just rusty. So you should be able to see in there. It's, we'll see. We'll see if we can get this cleaned up. So I've got some evapo rust. And we'll um, we'll try to get that cleaned up too while we're while we're working on this multiple projects at a time. Got some parts. This is the line to go in the tank. It's designed specifically for that. 
I talked to a guy locally that owns a business rebuilding and working on snowmobiles. And he said the blue fuel line is fine for carbs and all that kind of stuff. It's good. It's better than a lot of other stuff. But this stuff is what you need for in the tank. And I'm guessing the stuff that was in there was not the right stuff. New fuel gauge. That'll be nice. And carb kit. Or not a carb kit, excuse me. Fuel pump kit. Rebuild that fuel pump. So a couple parts. That should get us get us closer. Clamp is rusted on there. I don't know if you can see that. That clamp is rusted. I'm gonna reuse this. This is the pickup filter on it. It's a little dirty. Might throw it in some of that evapo rust that I'm working on stuff with just to clean it up. But um, it's a good shape. the The screen part is intact, so just clean that up and reuse it. Oh yeah, I apologize if I'm getting off track a little bit, but I kind of got it figured out. It's a little bit better in there now. You can still see all the, the junk in there, but carb cleaner. I sprayed some carb cleaner down there and that l loosened up all that stuff. Now there's just a bunch of debris floating around in here. So just basically got to rinse it out and, you know, pour some stuff in there and rinse it out. It's kind of, kind of sucks because this lip, you know, if you turn it upside down, this lip, you can't just drain it from this because all the gas and stuff stays up here. Oh. Grab more quarters. All right, so that car wash did the trick you know there's still a little bit of surface rust in there you can see some water but it really kind of cleaned out all the the major gunk in there so and i did the snowmobile tank too since i was doing it and yeah it's way cleaner so you can see the plastic in there is just it's just clean 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 sweet so that looks good now i just gotta dump some ISO heat in there. I actually have a big jug of isopropyl alcohol. Dump that in there, get the water out of there, and then um, should be able to start getting the fuel systems ready to go on these two things. So yeah, but that'll probably be about it for the bonus footage on that. So here's an exploded view of that fuel pump. So, you know, on the one side, it was just like this when you take it apart. So boop, boop, boop. And there's the inside. You can see the plastic diaphragm there. Some more diaphragms, one on this side, and then one on this side with a split in the middle of them. I don't know if you'll be able to see that in there, but there's lots of gunk in here. So I'm very glad I didn't run this fuel pump as is. So split down the middle, and then this one is just one solid piece. So it goes together like that, like that. Diaphragm on one side, in and out. Sucks it through. Easy peasy. I don't know, are these the right size? Oh yeah, it looks like it. Kinda. Kinda not really, huh? No. There, maybe it goes this way. No way. Look at that. So I'm lining up that hole up here. I mean, that's lined up perfectly. And then that one's not. That one's not. That one's not. Even if I turn it this way, does it do it that way? Oh, no. I had to wait like two weeks to get this. Or a week. Oh, no. It's not the right one. Shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. My guy ordered the wrong 
Wrong kit for me. God darn it. Uh, okay, well, whatever. I'll have to order another one, I guess. Well, here's the situation. I'll just show it to you right now. We'll do it live. It is, it's literally almost New Year's Eve right now. And uh, here's the snow situation. I mean, that's the snow that we have. We're in northern Minnesota, and there's... I mean, look at it. It's pathetic. So I guess I'm not in any hurry to get this snowmobile running, but it would be nice. So, yeah. We'll see. All right, here's what we're doing for a fuel pump. We're going to try it. Um, not in a huge rush, but I'm kind of impatient, so... Here's what we're doing. This is uh, just like an off-the-shelf lawnmower fuel pump. Should work. I don't know. It's got one an in and an out, and it's bigger. It's got five sixteenths lines on it. This sled doesn't really make a whole lot of power. Two carburetors. Should be able to tee off of this. Bigger lines. It's about the same size. I don't know. Should flow about the same. But we'll try that. 20 bucks off the shelf and if it works sweet if not i'll figure something else out but they had it in stock so we'll, we'll try that so the next thing i'm going to work on after i get that fuel pump going is this i don't know if you can see it that this wire is kind of crappy that uh, that guy i got the parts from um had this laying on the floor and then we were just kind of kicking around back in the shop kind of shooting breeze and he had a pile of dust and dirt like he was sweeping up and i'm like actually i need one of those and uh it looks like a homemade jobber with some cable but it's thicker it's definitely thicker and he's like oh well there you go so sweet got the got a new cable didn't even have to order it pay for it or whatever so i'll throw that on there too so here's what that's gonna look like inside the tank i got that all cleaned up it's just uh stainless mesh and then I had like a wire clamp on there and I had to grind off the ends of it. And same thing with this one. I put a clamp on there. I had to grind off the, like the little ears. See the ears on there? I had to grind those off. The reason being because you have to thread this through that hole and it just barely fits. So you need to grind all that off to get it through there. Um, because you really should have a, a clamp on the end of that. So here's the inside of that fuel pump. Sorry, it's kind of dark, I lost my light, but diaphragm, spring. You can kind of see the other is like a smaller diaphragm right in there, one on each side, and then the spring on this side. It all just kind of flops over. But I would say that's about the same. I'm not worried about flow or anything like that. Um, yeah, those the little diaphragms in there and everything should be about the same. Also, I got that cooking. Um, I, I threw some rags in there and blew them around with the air hose to kind of soak up some of the stuff. And then just used um, the uh, air blower here in there, kind of constantly blowing air out. So I don't know if it's even close to being dry yet. No, it's getting there. I went ahead and threw the carbs on. Uh, I didn't think you'd want to stare at my plumber's crack bending over this thing getting them in there but you it's easy you take the air box out the air box was out obviously slide, slide the carbs in the boot and then just set the air box down in there in and out easy peasy got a new see there's the new pulse line i'm gonna rig up and one of the new fuel lines I'm trying to figure out where i want to set this fuel pump i think i might just stick it right here the the factory location is right here but um i'm not a big fan of that and that's why I took this fuel pump apart anyway. So that's why I took this fuel pump apart anyway, because I want to try clocking this, the, the pulse line in the in and out line the best I can. Because, just because of the location of the fuel lines and the pulse line and stuff. So I'll see if I can find a good spot for that. I decided to mount the regulator right here. Um, for lots of reasons. Number one, it's the easiest, right on top. And number two, if this one doesn't work, I don't really want to like 
mess around with trying to mount it there. So where it originally mounts, which was right here on the side. So it's really kind of in the same spot. Got some nice stainless screws mounted in there. So I got the pulse line and I clocked this thing to the, you know, so it makes a little bit more sense. Still not perfect. I wish these were flipped. That's the in and the out. But that works. And then remember when I took this tank off and the line in there broke off? Well, here's how you fix that. So Polaris has like this whole, like it goes back and forth. There's like four feet of line there. And then what you do is then you just kind of scoot, scoot some in there. So I started over there, scooted some. You just pull a little extra, pull it in. Cause this stuff is still nice and soft. Pull it, pull a little extra, pull it nice and tight. Sorry about that. So yeah, we'll just give it a little quick trim. Yeah, believe it or not, I have, I'm not a professional film crew here. I'm just using my phone. So yeah, slide that on there. Whoop. Whoop. Good enough. And then you can kind of take the slack out of it. Slack out of it again. So there we go. Back at it, and that folds right there. So that's how you do that. That's why they give you like four feet of it. So you can just clip it off and do it. So actually the, the reason is because it's the fuel. And they don't want to get condensation up in there, but you knew that. So I've, I've got the, the fuel lines run from the tank to the pump uh, and the pulse line. And I've got gas in the tank it's it's been a couple of years since I since this thing has run, so I'm just gonna throw a little bit of 40 to one in the cylinders. I'm not gonna fire it up right now. I just want something, some type of lubrication in there, but uh, just a tiny little bit in each one of the cylinders, to kind of lube it up a little bit, and I'm gonna pull it over and see if uh, um, see if we can get the fuel pumping through the system and kind of worked out we'll just give it a shot see if it see if it pumps i'm just gonna these are the old plugs i'm just gonna throw them in there to keep the compression up to get that pulse pump working the way it should i don't know if it matters or not but okay so fuel, <laughs> don't judge me on my zip tie thing, but it, fuel shut off is right there in the factory location, even though it's not even a factory one, but whatever. So fuel line coming in down, goes up and around here on the inlet side of the pump, pulse comes from the engine. And then what I'm gonna do is when this outlet, I just ran a T, so it should work. This isn't a speed demon or anything, so it doesn't need a whole lot of fuel, but all right, let's give it a shot here. I cranked on it a bunch of times off camera. I'm out of breath. I'm so out of shape. But I can see they're starting to see come fuel come through here now. So on the on the off chance that this thing starts, it's got spark, but I'm just gonna hook it up and I'm just gonna pull till I have a heart attack and see if it see if it goes. So there goes nothing. So there's my problem. This, see how uh, there's two drain plugs on the bottom of this motor. And um, that was my problem. I guess that makes sense. I was cranking, cranking, cranking. This thing is full of oil, full of oil. So, I mean, it's still draining. So there's my issue. Oh man, that's gonna make a mess. I should get some floor dry down. One second. 
All right, so that's not necessarily a bad thing. I know my oil pump works and this motor is now well lubricated. You can see some smoke. I don't know if you can see it kind of coming out of that cylinder. So that means it was trying to fire, burn in there. So I'm gonna drain this, crank it over a few times, um, get that oil flushed out of there and maybe dump some more uh, fuel down the, the cylinder hole, maybe get it to fire off real quick and burn some of that out. It's gonna be a one smoky, smoky mofo. So let's just try it. It's getting pretty late, but I'm on a roll here. So I wanna get this to the next step. All right, so oil is drained. I put a little bit of gas in there. The fuel line's hooked up. I'm gonna leave the choke off. Spark plugs are cleaned off. I blew them off the torch. Ignition, we should. If it's not flooded again, it should fire, I would think. All right, so there we go. It probably ran off that tiny little bit of fuel that was in there. So I'm gonna put the choke on and see if she goes again. fine. Woo! She's smoky. I better open this garage door before I die. All right. We're doing this live. Okay. It seems like it works. Oof. Dang it. Well, I, um, it's like 10 o'clock at night. I got to work tomorrow. And, um, sweet, well, it runs, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that means now I have to shower because I smell like two stroke smoke. It's the next day here, and so I'll, I got the garage door opened up, so we'll see if this thing runs and clears some of that smoke out of it. on both cylinders okay so snowmobile itself is reading 28.7 degrees what that was so loud is it yeah hmm. 203 and 2 24. So it's running on both cylinders. But 
Apparently it's too loud, so. I'll deal with getting this thing really tuned in once we get some snow, I think, and get this all cleaned up. It runs, that's the whole point. Uh, it's running on both cylinders, so that's good. It's too loud to do it while the kids are sleeping, apparently. So the next thing I'll have to do here is address this, the reverse, the reverse doesn't work. You can see it kind of works on engaging there, but like this is loose. And then we also have this situation here. So pretty nasty looking from what I have experienced and what I've heard and stuff, that's pretty normal, but uh, we, we'll, we'll pull this, this gear case cover off and take a look at that and see what's going on in there because that it needs attention obviously so that's the next thing we'll do all right i got the case off that's what we're looking at on the inside sludgy crappy nasty this is the engagement what you call a shift fork or something for the reverse in and out and looks like there's some type of thrust bearing or washer there and here's what that inside of this chain case looks like so it looks like the gasket is good for the most part the chain i don't know how much tension there should be on the chain i'll have to do a little bit of research but it looks like there's some adjustment in that tensioner there and then i don't know how this works looks like that that must engage the reverse or something there's a I'll have to do a little bit of research on that, but so the I found a service manual for the chain tension on that, and it says to go 20 inch pounds and then back half a turn, I think is what it said. I'm just going off of memory. But um 20 in 20 inch pounds is like nothing. And I double checked it. I'm again I should probably triple check it, but 20 inch pounds. Which makes sense because it's a chain. But uh, I don't have a, a torque wrench that goes that small. And I even looked up uh, to get a new one. It's like 50 bucks. And the quarter inch torque wrench, has go, that's like the lowest that they go. So might just eyeball this one. See if you look at, like the gears on that look good. The gears on that look good. I don't know if you can focus on that. But they're not you know, overly, you know, rounded over, or bent or anything like that. There's plenty of oil on the chain in there. I don't know. This looks fine to me. You know, none of these, it's just that that, uh, that tension is, is really loose. So here's what we're working with. It, uh, there's some, it's loose, you know, I'm just barely pushing on it. So it's loose. It's not like overly tight. I basically, I tighten this down till I felt resistance, which it's, you know, good old 916 bolt. So, I mean, like a caveman style, but I did it till I felt resistance and went back like a quarter turn. So I'm, I don't know, who knows, but that's fine. It's loose. You know, it's definitely, it's definitely not tight. You know, I didn't tighten that thing down and then go back a little bit. I just went until I felt a little bit of resistance. Which, if, if you think about the lightest setting on a quarter-inch torque wrench, it's probably when you just start to feel resistance. So that I'm just going to run it like that. But, uh, yeah, and I'll, I don't know, we'll just wing it. should be fine. All right, I got the chain, chain case back on. Now I'm kind of battling with this right here. So that lock nut is, like, pretty much frozen. I got it to budge a little bit. But I have to play this game, you know, the game where you have to use a vice grip up here, but not too tight so you don't pinch the thing. And then it's literally just kind of one of these things uh, where you kind of work it back and forth. See, it's just barely kind of moving um, and just kind of work it back and forth and work its way down the, down the line there. So I actually screwed this up. Look at that. I don't know if you can kind of see it, but that nut, I just strip the threads or did something in there see that nut is just kind of awkward and it's just it just 
it spins by hand. I know you can't see this. Maybe you can see it this way, but it spins by hand, but it doesn't tighten. So here's what we did. I, um, I just brought that other lock nut up top just to test this to make sure this reverse works, not a permanent solution. I'm gonna order a new cable because this one's screwed. Um, so you can kind of see when I pull the lever, it kind of goes and it doesn't fully, oops, there, make it engaged. So that's tight. Um, now I should be able to loosen it up. Here is the fluid that I'm going to be using for this. Valvoline full synthetic multi-vehicle transfer case fluid. Here's why. This fluid meets the performance, blah, blah, blah. Chain driven transfer cases, whatever, blah, blah. Low temperature protection, gear wear, all that kind of stuff. Now I was going to get the Polaris chain case oil, snowmobile chain case oil, it's like SCL or something like that. But I was looking at this one and I was looking at the Polaris one. I was shaking them. Polaris one seemed a little bit thicker. This one's a little bit lighter, but main difference, $30 a quart for the Polaris oil. No, not doing it. Look at this, nope, not doing it. 30 bucks a quart, no way. We're getting close. I ended up getting another one of these. That one was getting kind of worn out. You can kind of see it, it, it wore itself through. So got another one of those, no big deal. I'll show you the fuel lines. I got those tied up. I don't know, you can flame me all you want, I guess, I don't care. It looks like it, it should work. But uh, this is the line going to the one carb. And this is the line going to the other carb. This one goes up to the fuel pump. This is the feed and this is the pulse. And then the feed has a um, shut off valve there and that goes all the way up to the gas tank. Got to get a new one of these. The mice got into this, but it should work. They say, well, yeah, do not operate above 40 or engine failure will result. So that's a pretty affirmative statement. So that's in there, it's taken care of. One thing, <laughs> um, so I mentioned I got this from my dad and we cleaned the carbs years ago. I can't find the, the clips for these. And my parents are in Arizona right now. And so, um, I don't know. I don't really wanna drive all the way over there to see if they're even in the garage to find them. But anyway, so I just did that, threw a couple stainless screws and cinched it down there. And I'm gonna try to find some. I should be able to find the clips to hold this air box on. Um, I gotta border a bunch of stuff to kind of wrap this thing up anyway, but we're almost, we're almost to the point where we can drive it. So it's, it's getting kind of late tonight. I was working on this thing. It's about nine o'clock at night and, uh, maybe tomorrow during the day, we'll take it for its first spin in a couple of years and hopefully everything works on it.
All right, took a little break. Went to Arizona, enjoy some nice weather. And uh, this thing's been sitting for probably two, three weeks now. So let's see, see how good it starts. show you the situation here today's date january 31st here's the yard here's what we're dealing with Yep. Yep, yep, yep. More water coming down. Water coming off the roofs. Look at that lake. So that's what we're dealing with. Um, I'm not mad about it, to be honest with you. We've had the last few, last few winters haven't been that bad, but over the last, I don't know, maybe 10 years, we've had some pretty brutal winters, um, very brutal winters. It should by rights be well below zero right now. So it's not good. It's not good for the environment. There's really, you know, we live on a lake and if there's no snow, the lake starts off the summer really poorly. Well, oh yeah. And um, so this is not good, uh, especially like for wildfires and stuff in the spring. But to be honest with you, it's kind of nice having, it's 50 degrees right now. About two o'clock in the afternoon, 2.30, 50 degrees. I haven't had to plow snow. Um, it's It's been great. So I'm not mad about it. We'll take it. I don't want every winter to be like this, but um, at the end of the day, snowmobile season, I don't think it's going to happen this winter. So I fixed it. It runs good. It drives good. The, the reverse cable is going to need some attention. It works. It functions, but it's not tight. The fuel system works. The oil injection system works. Um, I've driven it on the road. I've got it up to full speed, which is 50-ish. Um, so that means the clutch system is working. The belt is functional. The Everything else on it seems to work. The seat will need some attention, but uh, I really want to drive it and make sure it works before 
I invest into a seat. And so duct tape will have to work for now. But um, yeah, for the most part, it's been pretty easy and you can't really beat it. So I'm going to end this video off here. Thank you for watching and uh, I'll be putting out some more stuff soon.